G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, quite a while back, one of my cousins, Kenny, he's older than me by a long stretch. He gave me a whole heap of these Mechanics Illustrated, popular science magazines. These are just a couple, you know, I've got a great big stack of these things and uh, they're always interesting getting it to go through because these were the days back in the 50s. That's when I was born, 1951 actually. Um, back in the days, when they put these out, you know, do it yourself and home sort of jobs and make do were all the name of the game and yeah, it's pretty cool. And so you know, you look at these magazines and there's quite often there's there's uh, ideas in here how to make stuff and do stuff and wow, oh, I can even bring you back from the dead. Look at that. Wanna be a world champion? How to make a fortune in formulas. It's all here. I mean, it's it's amazing stuff. And, uh, yeah, 1950s and 60s. and There you go. Anyway, these magazines often have articles in them on how to make stuff. And I, was go I go through them and sort of, you know, check out the, uh, the ideas. And I sort of wondered it wasn't a bad idea at all. It was this one here. I hope that comes up all right. Countersunk dead centre for lay tail stock for aligning an armature shaft to turn a commutator. And what it is, it's basically a, a morse, goes in the tail stock. And the tail stock uh, should be over here, I suppose, but anyway, it goes in the tail stock. And of course, see, with commutators, they generally have a plain end on the shaft. And sometimes you get this other stuff too plain end, no centre point. So to, to support the thing, because you've got to support them on both ends, to support the thing, you're stuffed, really, unless you've got some way of holding a plain-ended shaft. So what they've done is they've done a, an easy fix here. It's just a, a Morse taper with a 90-degree concave in it and an oil hole coming down so you can oil it, you see, because you've got to... It's like using a dead centre... I mean, it is a dead centre, but instead of being a pointy one, it's a concave one. And so it's self-centering, and all you have to do is just put a little angle on the end of your shaft. Away you go. Tip some oil in and good to go. So I've, I've had this actual photocopy for quite a while, and I thought, I really should do something about this, because I've been caught out a few times, and I've just made up a quick and dirty one of these, but I thought I really should have a look and see what I've got. So I went through my odds and sods, and I've actually got an old Morse taper. And originally it was a, you can see how it is, originally it was longer, and it had a hole through the side with a grub screw, and it, you could, it was made to take a, a something or other that went in there, of some non-standard diameter. It was pretty useless. I never ever used it. And I thought, okay, I'll use this. This is good hardened steel, so I'll... Uh, I'll make one of these things, so I have, so that's basically, that's it there. So you can see what it's like here, it's uh, turned out pretty good. And what I did for the end was just drill in with a 90 degree drill, like so. And of course, you're never going to get a perfect finish with a drill, so then you just come in with the little grinder, and just use a, a diamond cylinder burr on that angle, just pull it up against it and just spin both. And that will give you a nice clean finish, a good finish. Mark it with texture pen before you, whenever you do grinding, always mark it out with texture pen or Sharpie. And then when you grind in, you can see how you're going. You see whether you're grinding on one side or not. But... Uh, this turned out really well. So now I want to just take the sharp edge off the oil hole so that when the oil can goes in, the little brass nozzle doesn't get damaged. I mean, you could just drop the oil into it because I actually did it in two stages. The center hole is, as you can see, a smaller inside. And I opened it out so that I could uh, just get the, the oil can tip in there. But that's it. Simple, simple, simple. 
this is where that little grinder or any tool post grinder, small tool post grinder, comes in handy. So let's get on with it. Okay, you can see I've got the, the little machine set up on the top slide. And now it's supply sitting over here. I've got a power board at the back of the lathe here so I can plug in lights and drills and the tachometer and all sorts of stuff. It's switchable. Uh, handy to have one of those mounted near your lathe, you know, so you can just plug in stuff as you need it. A tool post grinder, anything. But anyway, this little gadget, which is like a little tool post grinder, I suppose, it really does work well and it's very precise. So I'll mount the the uh, Morse taper in the in the chuck and we'll just grind it with the carbide burn. trick if you want to line stuff up. Always use your tail stock to get it nice and centered. No problem. Piece of cake. Okay. Now this is only going to be very light pressure so it's no big deal. Center it first before you get going. These are good because it's very, very precise. This thing, very, very easy to set up. You know, it's all adjustable with the top slide. So you've got very, very good adjustment. We're good to go. Now you always put on safety glasses whenever you drill or grind on the lathe or any machine because we're dealing with pretty high speed cuttings coming off. Well, we're all good. Lock down the, lock down the carriage. Turn on the beast. See how that's self-centered the chuck, just, just pulled into it. Well, I can't go any, any more than that because my grindstones are too big a diameter. So that'll have to do, I'll just run a bit of emery tape around there. And that'll finish her off. And she's good to go. I mean, it turned out pretty well considering. And once again, we're just using it old stuff, so let's just spin it. And then we'll wire buff it after just to take the sharp edge off. Compressed air, and she's all done. Well, 
Well, there you go, she's all done. Turned out okay. Not bad at all. There, canvas hunt, dead centre for lathe tail stock. So you can do your armatures or anything you've got which has got a plain shaft with no centre point or centre point's damaged. You know, sometimes when you take bearings off of armatures, your puller can screw up the, the end of the shaft and be off centre. But with this, no problem. You know, you can use a fixed steady to hold them, but you've got stuff all to work with, you see. You've got very little area, so your fixed steady has got to be right in. And uh, if the bearing is on there, well, sometimes you can mount the bearing if the bearing comes out, but generally it's just like this, in which case you've got not much to play with. And yeah, this will centre it every time. You're not putting enormous pressure on this sort of job anyway, and uh, this will locate it dead easy. Okay, that's it from me. Check out these old magazines, there's some cool stuff in them. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.